boom is the start of these videos but maybe that's not very appropriate in this instance i want to talk about the business of trans women in sport which is something i've talked about before but i got into an exchange on twitter last night so you know it's going to have been a pretty in-depth exchange and um i want to outline what i had to say there uh, interested to know what other people think about this in relation to to other trans issues within society which most of you will know i am generally very much on board with i think that as a society we should do what we can these are generally people who they've got enough on their plate in actual fact uh, as things stand and if we can do our best to sort of make their lives a bit better invest a bit more in them than perhaps we do in the average person as we would do with with people in other sets of circumstances then i'm all on board to do that they have my sympathies and i think as a society we should take some allowance of their situations um but the sporting one is an area of concern for me i, I think it's not been much of an issue so far. And I think that one of the reasons is, is because there aren't actually that many trans women. It seems to be a growing number as it's becoming more acceptable, the number's growing. But I also think it's maybe because trans women and probably trans men as well have had too much on their plate. They've had enough shit to deal with, um, with our business of, of transitioning and trying to be accepted in society than to try and concentrate on elite level athletic performance. But one could well imagine that that will change over the coming years and that if trans women are accepted more properly into society that they will feature more and more in sport. And so I think we need to take this very seriously. Now, what had spurred this on was that somebody I knew had been linked. He's a cyclist in actual fact and he was linked it in a kind of amusing way of, well, maybe there is a chance for you to, because he competes, Maybe there is a chance for you to win something after all. And what it was, it was this article about this trans woman called Rachel McKinnon, who is also, I don't know if she's a professor, but she's a doctor of, of transgender studies at a, at a university in Canada. And she has won an event, and not just an event, she's won a world championship uh, in the Masters, the 35 to 44 category, sprint category, cycling, indoor world championships. So not in considerable achievement, actually, you know, that's a fairly prestigious thing to, to when she gets to wear the, the rainbow bands in a discipline for the next 12 months. And I'll show you a picture, I'll throw a picture up. You can tell who's the winner because they have the rainbow bands on and because they're stood in the middle, but I, one of the things, the first things I would say is I think you would know who was the who was the trans woman in that picture anyway. And I don't mean that in a cruel way, but what I mean is, and this is part of the issue that I have, is that this whole business, if you listen to the IOC or anybody talk about this, they always boil it down to testosterone, right? And that, that, that trans trans women have to have suppressed their testosterone for a certain level and that that is a sufficient period of time a sufficient level for a sufficient period of time that they deem that that your musculature will have atrophied to that of a cis woman okay but clearly there's more going on than just mus than just testosterone and musculature or at least more than just musculature and this is the first point that i would draw from this image of the winners which is that if Rachel McKinnon hadn't gone through puberty as a man, then she wouldn't look the way she does now, right? She wouldn't be as large as she is now. She wouldn't stand out between those other two athletes in the way that she does now. So although her testosterone may be suppressed now, I don't think that is the whole picture. Um, and that is something that concerns me. And there doesn't seem to be very much talk about this really in that clearly people's frame their skeleton plays a role in sporting success you can see how some events like basketball and rowing being tall is a very very big advantage there and men are on average taller than women 
We know that in cardiovascular activities that men's performance exceeds women's performance by about 10%, the same as it does over power events. So the 100 meter sprint or the marathon, it's about the same 10% gap. But that isn't because they're more heavily muscled. We know that some of it is accounted for the body fat percentage, but even when you take that out, there is still a gap between male performance and female performance. So there are other factors involving the cardiovascular system as well where a man's performance on average is higher than a woman's performance and so therefore at the elite level that very you know the end of the of the distribution curve uh, that that features in as well and that doesn't ever seem to be featured in all it seems to be featured in is musculature and skeleton certainly doesn't go down does it just because you've had your testosterone suppressed for several months do these cardiovascular factors go down as well i don't know they don't seem to want to talk about that uh, but what i found interesting was let me read you what a couple of things that it's my second channel so i can have a swig of coffee while i'm talking um a couple of things that she said that concerned me Bear in mind, she has won this event, um, and, and again, it's like you've seen several times, the woman who, who came third, she she's thrown her hands up in the air and said, I, I don't feel like I'm competing on a level playing field here. This isn't just cis white men scum moaning about this. It, it's I, 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 This is really an issue for women, in actual fact. It's not an issue if, for a man. It doesn't really make any fucking difference. It's just my interest in sport and the, the business of fairness that, that I'm, I'm concerned about this and because I want to uplift women's sport as well I think it's really good it's, it, we need to try and uplift women's sport because it's good for women um, and I think if you disincentivize women from sport that's not a good thing it's going in the wrong direction this is what Rachel McKinnon wrote in response to this win we cannot have a woman legally recognized as a trans woman in society and not be recognized that way in sport so she's drawing a line in the sun there doesn't matter about any other issues that's the principle for her focusing on performance advantage is largely irrelevant because this is a rights issue we shouldn't be worried about trans people taking over the olympics we should be worried about their fairness and human rights instead. Now, I think that's a pretty extreme and concerning position because what she's effectively saying is, well, even if we should, even if trans women do come to dominate, even if you end up with a position where trans women push some records out of reach of cis women, then that's just hard shit. Um, you know, the principles of fairness in sport aren't important. What's important is the principle of fairness that trans women get to compete, whatever the consequences of that. So effectively, as I said on Twitter, you could be sort of sacrificing the 999 out of a thousand for the sake of the one out of a thousand. And that concerns me there. And uh, let me just read you something else that she wrote that I found. Um, and, and this is with regards to, to testosterone. The myths around testosterone are very deep, and I do a lot of research on this. Some people think testosterone is only found in males and estrogen, only in females, and that is not true. Everybody has both. And average males have more testosterone than females, and females have more estrogen than males. In a recent study, blah, 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 blah. Right, she says this study that shows that effectively, look, uh, um, so a disproportionate amount of elite males have very low testosterone. This study shows there is absolutely no relationship between testosterone in terms of performance in males. The relationship they found in women was weak and sporadic. So what she's effectively saying, to me that counts against trans women competing in women's sports just on the grounds that they've had their testosterone suppressed. Because what she's saying is that the testosterone actually hasn't made any fucking difference. Right? That's not what accounts for the difference in male performance and female performance. Well, something must do, right? Because over a whole gamut of sporting disciplines, strength disciplines, strength endurance disciplines, power disciplines, endurance disciplines, over a whole gamut of things, males outperform females generally by about 10%. Something must account for that. The thing that's being taken into account by the IOC and the other sporting bodies is testosterone. 
If she's saying that testosterone isn't responsible, then effectively what she's saying is that the things that are responsible could still be in her bloodstream that she's still benefiting from them. So that doesn't seem like something to make it less of a concern, unless what she's saying is it's all just a myth, and actually males and females are just as good at sport as one another, and it's just that females just don't try hard enough, right? Which is absolute bollocks. We all know that that is bollocks, right? Female athletes are trained just as hard as male athletes. Her attitude is seriously concerning there and if what she says in that second comment is true then she is giving us cause it's not just me giving us cause for concern saying well yeah maybe testosterone you reduce that you reduce the musculature but you've still got the skeleton you've maybe still got the impact on the cardiovascular system she's saying now bollocks even to that because it's not testosterone that's causing these things it's it, it must be other things uh, other things which are not being taken account of so yeah Interested to know what people think about that. For me, the point of concern is this, is that we need to think, if you're thinking, well, no, on principle, we have to be fair. If we're regarding trans women as women, so there's a spider just about to go in front of the camera. If we're regarding trans women as women, then the principle that has to go above everything else um, is that they're allowed to compete with cis women. It doesn't matter what the result is, it's just hard shit. You have to then ask yourself, what is the point of having segregated sport in the first place? Why are we bothering with it, right? Why not just have an open category, males and females, men and women, they all just compete together. You know why that is. Because if we did that, that would just disenfranchise women from sport because they can't, let's be honest, they cannot compete um, on anything like a level playing field they're not going to feature in the finals they're not going to feature in the heats they're not going to feature in the top 100 if it's a busy sport they're not going to feature in the top 500 and that's just the facts of it and we don't want that scenario right we want women to be able to challenge themselves to have goals and to be the best woman in the world at the 100 meters or the marathon uh, or some other discipline we want that because we want that sporting challenge and opportunities for all, right? So if that is the goal of you doing it, how can you turn a blind eye to something that's just going to potentially ride roughshod all the way across it? If it just destroys that and destroys those chances in 10 years or in 20 years, maybe when the position of trans women is better within society, when more... When more people that are, that are gendered uh, as a man decide, no, actually, I, you know, I, I feel I'm a woman and, and they go through all of that, right? When there's more of them and when they feel they can invest more time in sport because they're not concerned by these other things, at that point, if we're really not, if we're going to say, well, if they, we've got to be, you know, we've got to have our principles. If they dominate women's sport, then so be it. Then we're destroying the very reason we had women's sport to begin with, I think. And that should be a real concern. My view is, and I said this to someone this morning, is that I think the way round it is to look at what did we really envisage when we talked about men's and women's sport. And it wasn't, this was, the problem is that comes from a time when we were using man and woman to mean something different to this modern usage that we've got now to mean sort of effectively the gender of the brain, we were using man and woman as a synonym for a, a human male and a human female. And we're still using those terms in sport, but we're giving them other definitions outside of sport and saying, how? Well, these new definitions that we've got outside of sport must be what we're referring to when we refer to a men's event and a women's event in sport. And I don't think that was the intention. And it, it isn't a sensible intention. The sensible intention would be to have male events and female events primarily. Now, I've never really seen, other than, again, some bollocks ideological principle, I've never really seen the 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 point of having a male event right you may as well have an open event and if a woman's good enough to compete with the with the, the males sorry if a female is good enough to compete with the males then i haven't got a problem with that i, I mean you might say well you can't compete in both events at the same meeting or whatever right and that would be fair because you've got a double chance there that nobody else has got you've got to nail your flag to the mass but if a if a female wants to compete in the open and um, then I would say, so be it. So for me, the way round this, so as not to offend any trans women by saying, well, you're not 
uh, as womanly enough to compete in the women's event is to have a female only, say it's the 100 meters, you have a female only 100 meters and then you have an open 100 meters, okay? So you need to be biologically female to compete in the female only 100 meters. Anybody can compete in the open 100 meters. Interested to know what you think about that suggestion and what you think about these issues. Is it even an issue? Am I worrying about something that isn't going to happen and you're only ever very, very rarely going to see trans women winning things in sport? Or is this something that's going to become more and more of an issue? Okay, interested to know what you think. What I find interesting with this, I will just leave with this, is that this is one of these things where in a way, I'm kind of pleased this is a women's issue and not a, a men's issue because it's there won't be quite the level of eye-rolling, privileged, entitlement, privileged, entitled males complaining because they've had it good for so long and now they're not having it quite their own way all the time anymore, right? Because predominantly, I might be a bloke complaining about it here or raising concerns, but it's going to be women who are going to get more and more frustrated and annoyed and upset and disenfranchised by this because they're going to feel like, well, I can spend my lifetime training here and I'm competing against somebody who has had an advantage by... We're talking about trans women that have gone through puberty as a man, by the way. We're not talking about trans women that that, that transitioned before they'd gone through puberty. Um, that doesn't matter what they do. doesn't matter how hard they train. That There's just a... There's just an overwhelming physiological advantage that that no biological woman in the world possesses, but that maybe these trans women do possess. Okay, thoughts? Interested? Thanks for watching and bye. How do I switch this off? Where is it? Here we go.